select board meeting for Monday, February 28th, 2022. Um, first order of business is to approve the agenda unless there's any changes. Any? Make a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Second. Sir, second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. I'm going to recuse myself from the <laughs> consent agenda items. Okay, I um, the consent agenda as presented. Is there a motion to approve? I make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Any discussion? If not, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? None. Um, consent agenda approved. <laughs> Both Give back. <laughs> uh, moving on to public portion of the meeting, this is an opportunity for anyone from the public to speak to anything that's not on the agenda. Is there anyone from the public that wishes to speak tonight? I do. Sure. I'm going to speak as a member of the public versus as a select board member. I just want to, I know we probably all feel for the people of uh, the Ukraine. I have a special kind of my, my grandfather uh, emigrated in the early part of the 20th century to U Ukraine, so I have a special bond to that area. Um, Kiev is where his birthplace was. Mm -hmm. So just a note that all our thoughts and prayers are with the Ukrainian people and the atrocities that the Russian people are participating. I think that would be from the people of Waterbury, I think that would be a unanimous yes. Thanks, Mike. Yes, thanks. All right, anyone else from the public that wishes to speak? Did you have anything for the public portion of the agenda, Lisa? No. Okay. Uh, Hi. Thank you. All right, we'll move on to select board items. Interview candidate for assistant planning and zoning administrator. This is uh, Neil Leitner. I'll make a quick introduction, and Liz is here as well. So he's been nominated by the Planning Commission. Great. So welcome, Neil. Thank you. Um, so yeah, if you want to start, tell us a little bit about yourself and your interest in the uh, position. Sure. Um, I currently work as the planner and ZA for the town of Woodstock. Um, I've been there for two years. Um, Michael Brands. Uh, was there pri previously for about 32 years, so really impressive. And um, um, uh, long story short, um, I've seen this position open for a while. Um, previously, I worked at the town of Richmond, and um, at that time, uh, Claire Rock actually came there from Waterbury. And so we got to know each other really well. And uh, um, I reached out to her and asked her about this position because um, it is a lot closer to home. and. Um, uh, we recently purchased a, well, a year ago purchased a house in Northfield, mm -hmm. and so uh, having a commute of, of almost three hours is <laughs> probably not sustainable long term. Um, I am looking for a long term position. I enjoy this career. I've done it for about 20 years. Um, and uh, Waterbury, um, from what I know of it, I'm impressed with it. I've seen it grow, you know, I saw post Irene and um, seeing how resilient it is. Um, the, I guess a break I took um, after Richmond, I went to the, uh, to Vienna, Austria, uh, to the Vienna University of Economics and Business to get a ecological economics <coughs> master's degree um, because that's, um, my training is in urban planning and town planning and a bachelor's in urban planning from, you know, an undergrad at Arizona State University and, um, but I've always noticed in this career how um, the economics and the environment are kind of those, you know, the three circles that you have, economics and the environment, they overlap with land use. And it was uh, something that I felt like I needed to know more, I wanted a professional education on to be able to continue on my career. And. Uh, I'm really glad I got it, and um, ended up eventually making my way back here um, afterwards. And uh, so that's kind of my more recent background. Um, originally, I grew up in Seattle, so if you look at my resume, I started out on the West Coast. Um, but Vermont's my home. I feel like it's, yeah. So, 
So that sums that up. I guess. <laughs> questions from the board? Yeah, I have a couple of questions. Um, what do you see uh, in, in, in zoning and uh, those kind of issues as the biggest challenge for the Waterbury area? Well, affordable housing at this current moment is a big Some affordable housing options in the past and is looking for new creative ways to enable affordable housing. Um, looking at different types of households, um, accessory dwelling units for instance, um, things like that. Um, I think the challenge is to inject creative thinking into zoning. Um, what do you see as, uh, in zoning, what do you think something that the town can do to promote affordable housing? Um, there is a, um, this, a set of like affordable housing type objectives that um, could be out there, such as the accessory dwelling units, um, such as uh, one I discovered in Woodstock, um, there is a density uh, allowance usually in most zones. Um, but for instance, in, in central Woodstock, where they really don't have any lots, you know, it's downtown buildings, um, they also have or had a density requirement um, and it was restricted to the size of the lot. So that was uh, severely restricting the number of apartments that could go upstairs above the retail. And um, eliminating that density requirement for the central commercial district was one way to increase capacity. Mm -hmm. So, okay. thinking outside of the box. I okay. see. Which, to, to follow that up, I think in the interim zoning, we did eliminate the density calculation in downtown, so Waterbury is recognizing those opportunities as, you know, we, we talked a lot about, especially as the pandemic ramp, ramped up, of just that the housing crunch and, and, afford, and affordability through, I think, mostly supply demand. and it was recognized that if we're gonna to try to grow, it might be better to grow center out and not you know, keep sprawl to a minimum, but allow the rule book to allow more density in areas like the downtown that has access to water and sewer. Um, so we did in the interim zoning, which you, know, you would um, obviously have visibility to it and be actively managing the, the use of those zoning rules. There have been a lot of attempts, and that was just one zone of our zoning bylaws um, but you know there were I think the height went up by 10 feet mm -hmm. some of that is to reflect that you know we have a flood problem as well so we have to consider that but I really do think that supply ultimately might help with some of this affordability beyond the groups like we have a group down straight I don't know if you're familiar with that I don't know if they did Richmond mm -hmm. um, but you know you have the affordable housing groups that can build a certain number of units but they're they're really limited to yeah. I think the scale that we really need to be talking about to address some of these affordability issues. I think mean, short-term housing and our relationship to the mountains have also created an increase in demand, um, which is an economy that is good. It balances all the other economies, but if we don't backfill that with units, yeah. renters especially are going to be pushed out, and, and we're seeing that. So I think, mm. I think to your point that those are things we definitely need to continue to look at and, and consider. Good. Other questions from? Yeah, hi, I'm Katie. Hi. Um, how are your time management practices, and how are you with like juggling multiple projects and having multiple permits per se going at one time, and your communication with people, like um, explaining how some of the bylaws are working to maybe like first time people looking to build? Mm -hmm. Okay, so first on the time management, um, I'm very proud of my time, time management skills especially with um, deadlines because a lot of um, this, there's a lot of Vermont statutes and you know, legal obligations you have to do for um, scheduling. So um, I don't think I've ever missed one I'm, unless something I don't think I have missed one, but I'm very um, proud of how I can always meet those deadlines. Um, time management, I do it more of a, I'm a list person. I'll, I'll put out a list at kind of Monday um, prioritize, prioritize, sorry, um, and, uh, but of course that can change, you know, as the week goes along and different things pop up, um, but always having to have a 
kind of in the back of my mind a priority list of things, and those deadlines are all, they usually rise up to the top of the priority list. And uh, um, and uh, I guess the last part with the explaining bylaws. So that's why I've I've been in private sector regional planning and municipal planning, and that's why I choose to be in municipal planning because that's the part I find very rewarding is to be able to help people through the process, to be able to help them understand the process and what the bylaws are and just explain it um, kind of, as I always say, like put myself in their shoes and then explain it from there and you know try to come up with a common understanding if there's a disagreement and um, work off of that common understanding. Um, but that's kind of the fun of municipal planning, you get to work with everybody. So um, that's why I decided to stay in municipal planning. Awesome, thanks. Hmm? No, questions. <clears throat> yeah, I think I'm, I'm excited <laughs> that you have obviously quite a bit of experience in the field. I think it's fun to hear that you've been, you know, of course sometimes you might say you've only been in this other position in two years, why are you thinking about moving? But I understand the housing location is in commuting. I, I've been there and understand the challenges <laughs> in the commute. So um, I understand that. I think it's good that you've seen how, you know, we, Steve, Steve, when did you start here? 1993. So 93, <laughs> uh, 88. So we have some, you know, long-term leadership that are, have already announced that they'll be moving on. So I think having someone who has had visibility in maybe some other towns and how their approach to anything from how you can get started with that, <laughs> I would love to see, you know, what you can bring to, you know, just talk through how other towns maybe approach some of those just challenges. And I, I think that's one thing that would go a long way is, you know, as we've been in, there's this side group under revitalizing water rate called Economic Development Corporation or whatever. Alyssa was um, managing that group when she was the Economic Development Director that we talk a lot about how someone approaches the town and decides to do a project, how difficult that challenge might feel. And I know we do a lot, but I think we can continue to improve on just that, that comfort of taking a project from idea all the way through, I think is, is something that continues to be a strength that we, hopefully we can improve on and keep getting farther on. So hopefully that's something that can be a focus. But yeah, I don't have any additional. One more question. Yeah, sure. I know you've been a practitioner in the <coughs> field, but do you have specific coursework um, in you know land use, especially more, I know that you've had some you know academic studies elsewhere, but specifically for Vermont, land use law and anything in terms of UVM classes or, you know, through Vermont League of Cities and Towns? Um, let's see. Well, I guess land use law, um, I learned not through coursework, but with working with uh, litigious applications and working with, um, in Woodstock, we work with, um, uh, I guess, the same count legal counsel firm. and. So land use law is something that I, you know, it's not specifically my profession or job, but it's something I really kind of get into <laughs> in a weird way. So the Vermont statutes and um, just keeping up with the legislative agenda and um, seeing what's coming down the pipeline and how it affects land use law and um, different policies that could, you know, that change um, what you do on a day-to-day -day level. Um, and then I guess coursework, I uh, started doing the um, CFM, Certified Floodplain Manager, mm -hmm. um, and then I, was, I understand that would be something that um, I sh would get certified or, you know, I would work towards in this position, yeah, which, right. which is, that's our hope. Yeah. That's attractive to me, yeah, yeah. I, I would definitely like to do that, so, um, having worked in Richmond, but it was before the CRS, um, right. so, um, at that time we did, all, me and Claire actually worked on a lot of the elevation certificates and the LOMAs, and going through that process with the homeowners and, um, but yeah, it's a- That's why I expected mostly OTJ check that Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Any additional questions from the board? No, I think we can all say we're 
optimistic and hopeful. As I'm sure you've heard, it's been a long search. And so it feels, it yeah. feels exciting to have someone who wants to be dedicated and wants to be in Waterbury and has such a good, great experience. So I'd like to express my optimism <laughs> and excitement. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, I'll second that for sure. Um, so I think because you're familiar with kind of the process and the, the fact that we don't have a charter that we then have to approve, so if someone would like to make the motion unless there's any additional questions. We need to appoint him to the position <laughs> and it's assistant planning and zoning, zoning administrator. administrator. Right. Well, I'll be glad to make the motion to, I make a motion to approve, appoint, appoint, <laughs> Neil, what last name again? Leitner. Leitner, okay. Leitner uh, to the position of zoning administrator for the town of Waterbury. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Strong. Great. <laughs> Thank you. so much. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can make it, make it happen. Welcome aboard. And, Thank and you. just so to remind everyone, I've told you this, this is the fourth time in <laughs> six months, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, we so we only got through the, the last one. Oh. <laughs> he's made it through the appointment process. <laughs> Steve and I met with Neil last week. We've talked about um, you know the benefit package, pay, and everything else. We're all on the same page. Uh, we do have a requirement that he has to uh, authorize a background investigation, which we'll get going as soon as practicable. It will probably take a week or so before we get that back. And then at that point, I mean, he's free to tell Woodstock at any point that he's moving on, but uh, from our perspective, I can't, um, he can't start until that uh, background investigation is completed. And we talked the other day, and he's hoping for a two to four week uh, time frame before he can start here. So uh, we've encouraged him to you know, do it as quickly as possible. But Steve and I certainly understand professional obligations and not wanting to leave Woodstock in the lurch. There's a few things that he has to make sure uh, get taken care of there. So uh, we appreciate that. So anyway, with that, uh, who seconded this motion, okay? Yeah. All right, great. Thank you very Thanks much. So much. Thanks so much. Thanks to meet you. Yes, good evening. Thank you. We'll be in touch about the next steps with Bill. Sounds good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will, uh, you know, I'll, I'll email, I'll email to you the, uh, background investigation stuff, if you oh, can sure. uh, sign it and send it back, fill it out, and as soon as I get it back, we'll get it going, okay? Sounds good, thank All you. Right. Thanks. Thanks, again. All right, uh, joining the planning commission? I think we have to wait until 7 o'clock. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, the meeting starts at 7, so yeah. we... Yeah. 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 Sure, I'll go ahead and call the February 28th meeting of the Waterway Planning Commission to order. There's Steve. Oh, here he is. Well, <laughs> well there's Steve. Whoa, now I have a quorum. Yeah, you can't call, you can't call oh, you can't even start it. There we go. Uh, a little bit. Sorry, Mike. Yeah. Okay, now we officially have a quorum. Um, <laughs> and I'm calling the February 28th Planning Commission to order. Um, and we're meeting jointly with the Slack Board. Great, welcome. Um, we have uh, for discussion uh, this municipal resolution for downtown transportation fund, and Steve is going to walk us through what it is. Okay, great, thank you. And uh, Bill, you're welcome to chime in as well. Um, so, Bill and I have been working with Karen Nevin, executive director for Revitalizing Waterbury, on a downtown transportation fund. Grant. Uh, this is the grant program that funded uh, a lot of the streetscape improvements for the Main Street project. We, we actually got two grants that were combined into one that uh, paid for everything from benches to 
part of the street lights and everything. So um, there's a significant amount of funding in the program this year. And what we're uh, going to propose is the uh, reconstruction of the sidewalks on Randall Street. It's a project that's been in the planning for uh, many years, actually. Uh, they're very substandard, four foot wide concrete sidewalks. Of course, they went through Tropical Storm Irene in rough shape. So um, the proposal is to replace those sidewalks with five foot wide concrete sidewalks. And then to also uh, replace the sidewalk on Park Row between Randall Street and the intersection with South Main Street. Randall Street is not in our designated downtown. However, this program, uh, you can apply for funding for areas that are adjacent to downtown as long as they have a relationship to your designated downtown. The other component of the, uh, of the project is to replace the four existing pole lights that are in Rusty Parker Park. Mm -hmm. uh, they're antiquated. I'm quite sure they were here when I started uh, <laughs> 29 years ago. They were antiquated then. Um, these are the globe lights. So what we're proposing is to replace those with four period lights to match the Main Street lights. And they'll, they're going to be shorter. They're going to be 12 feet versus uh, 16 or 18, whatever the Main Street, project, uh, Main Street lights are. So those are really the two components. It's about a $240,000 project. And uh, we would have two years to construct it. It's a two-year program. The proposal is, uh, at this stage, is to have our highway crew do the sidewalk reconstruction. And um, Bill was uh, really um, adamant that we make sure to have plenty of time in case uh, they get tied up this year with you know, some emergency project, don't have time to do it this year. Uh, we will have two years to complete the work. So the application is due March 7th. We're uh, supposed to get a quick turnaround. We're supposed to hear in April. Uh, the downtown board of the state is the one who um, makes the decisions on the Downtown Transportation Fund grants. Uh, it's the staff at the Department of Housing and Community Development that uh, fields the applications and answers questions. So um, at any rate, the, um, did you have anything you wanted to add before we talk about the resolution, Bill? Do you want to talk um, about budget? Yeah, I just wanted to make sure everybody understood. We kind of got the cart before the horse a little bit. Um, the the um, the Randall Street sidewalks were clearly something in our capital improvement plan that we were moving forward with. And I had already put Fund 71 together and, and had um, you know $180,000, I think, for those two sidewalks on Randall Street. And we were talking internally about, well, if we got pinched, we'd do one side this year and then do the other side next year, like we did on Winooski Street. We did the same thing here over the past couple of years. And then this grant uh, opportunity came up and we <laughs> shifted gears a little bit. Now, the reason you're all here tonight is that the state's regulations require this to go through the Planning Commission uh, recommendation to the Select Board and then the Select Board voting on it. Uh, we've already included all this in this year's budget. So the Select Board has kind of already heard something about this, but what we were able to do is uh, there's a $240,000 line item in our downtown projects line for the uh, infrastructure CIP. And there's a $200,000 state grant line in there now as well. So we've already kind of planned for this. It's a 20% match. So uh, if you've got to get $200,000 of grant money, you have to put up a $40,000 match, and it's not then 160 and 40 for 200, it's going to be the $40,000 match on the 200. So the project's 240, and I think with these two things, uh, we'll likely spend most of that. Um, to Steve's point, we do also have $140,000 in the same budget for Main Street projects with a $140,000 grant, and that's just to finish the work that the, um, uh, 
that Steve was talking about that was done in the Main Street project. I think the wayfinding signs were part of that. They were. <coughs> That's you know, correct. Yep. Uh, trash receptacles, yep. the street lights, and, and the like. So, Most of that has been completed, and we, we're just in the process of putting together reimbursements, but there's a little bit of work left. So anyway, I just wanted to let you know it's already been budgeted. This does not foil or upend anything that we've talked about, but it's got to go through the process. So the, you can talk about the resolution, but it's got to be the planning commission making a recommendation right. to the select board. Right? That's correct. Yeah, so um, what the resolution, uh, I'll just read it, if that'd be okay, uh, just so you hear everything and then uh, you know, if you have questions, absolutely. So this is a municipal resolution for downtown transportation fund. Uh, whereas the town of Waterbury is applying for funding as provided for in the state of Vermont FY 2022 Budget Act and may receive an award of funds under said provisions and whereas the Department of Housing and Community Development may offer a grant agreement to this municipality for said funding and whereas the municipality has agreed to provide local funds for a downtown transportation grant. Now, therefore, be it resolved one, that the legislative body of this municipality enters into and agrees to the requirements and obligations of this grant program, including a commitment to match funds of 20% of total project cost. Two, that the Municipal Planning Commission recommends applying for said grant. And there's a place for um, the chair of the Planning Commission to sign, and um, Melissa's got the original here. So, um, so that's the resolution. So what we would need is a motion by the Planning Commission to recommend applying for the downtown transportation fund grant, and then a motion from the select board to, um, would they approve the resolution, Bill? Yeah, they would have to approve the, res the resolution. Question? Pretty straightforward. I can't remember if you said, I'm sorry. Um, do you? know the timeline of when they announce and then when the funds are dispersed? Yeah, we're hoping to hear a couple <laughs> Yeah, <clears throat> it'll have to go to the downtown board, so um, that's what they said. They, they should have an announcement. They rank all the projects, and then if they're if it's oversubscribed, they have a cutoff line, and then they fund everything. And so. they, they, they have quite a bit of money this year. Where <laughs> For the first time ever, there's hope that maybe all of these <laughs> applications can be funded. Cool. Um, you know, if and if we if we apply for this and we do the work, um, it's we'll get a grant uh, based on the amount of money that we spend. So these are all reimbursable grants. Mm -hmm. We actually have to do the project first, and once we do it, so we've got two hundred forty thousand dollars in the budget. Uh, if it turns out that it Costs one hundred ninety thousand. We'll get a grant of eighty percent of one hundred ninety thousand. Right. Thanks. And Steve El, can you clarify? This is because we're a designated downtown. Is that yes. correct? That's correct. The, um, this program is for designated downtowns and designated village centers that have um, gone through the uh, a certain planning process. Our our Waterbury Center village is not, but the downtown is definitely. And they really encouraged all of the, where they're listed, 19 designated downtowns, 20, and yeah. 18 or 20, I think. They really encouraged everybody to apply for these fundings, uh, for the funds uh, at this kind of level. So. Just to say from the Planning Commission, since we're here, that's it's worth being a designated downtown to suddenly have <laughs> access to this funding. And it's why we then have the downtown design review overlay that is yet another layer as we go through the rate. Um, would anyone like to make this needed motion on the planning commission? Yeah, I'll make the motion to uh, approve the um, resolution for the downtown transportation fund. Thank you, is there a second? I will second that. Motion by Martha, second by Eric. Any additional discussion from the planning commission or questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, I will sign this. And I think it'll be to recommend that will be the motion. Oh, I'm using a purple pen. Sorry. To, sign, to, to recommend that you, yeah, that you approve, approve the, the resolution. resolution. Now you have to, somebody has to. So now the select board, we need to get a motion to recommend that we sign the resolution. 
so moved. It's been moved. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Great. Well, thank you. We'll thank you. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm really sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so he has it right there. Spot for uh, each of the select board members to, like, if you need a pad or anything, Mike. Are we going to, like, move to the other room? Are these guys I think leaving? we're going to stay here. I think oh, these guys are done. Yeah. Oh. We're out of here. There's nothing else on the agenda. Mm -hmm. So I think at that point, we can take a motion to well, even though we did say it last week, this is officially the last meeting with Mark and Katie, so it's important to acknowledge and really express gratitude and um, sadness, but understanding. And um, yeah, I, as, as a first year um, member of the select board, I am just so glad that both of you were here to um, help me learn. So really, really much appreciated for your service. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank you both, for sure. Thank you both. And thank you for your leadership. Yeah, it's been, uh, I looked it up, it's seven years, so I appreciate it. And uh, I appreciate everyone supporting us. See in this role, but I'm happy to pass on my. Your last official act is the Yeah, there is a leadership. Awesome. Um, great. Uh, motion, motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. <laughs> <laughs> For your poll. Yeah. Uh,